ABC News again voted the best in the business in the prestigious Washington Journalism Review. Peter Jennings, best anchor. Sam Donaldson, best correspondent. This week with David Brinkley, best interview discussion program. No wonder ABC News is America's choice. You know, you've got to be a little lucky to win an award. But when a team wins five awards in one season, that's not luck anymore. That's Mitsubishi. This 1989 Galant just won a top award a lot of other car makers wanted. Motor Trend's Import Car of the Year. And four other Mitsubishi models won major awards this year. A perfect five for five, including Import Car of the Year. It's a lot easier to pitch with this kind of support. See your Southern California Mitsubishi Motors dealer. You could save up to $1,000. Mr. Big wants you here at 9 a.m. In business, when you have to be there, you have to be there. Mr. Big canceled the meeting. That's why U.S. Air has more jet departures in California than any other airline. Mr. Big changed his mind again. With convenient schedules to 15 California airports. Mr. Big says the deal's off. Forget it. So you can get out and back the same day. Guess what? The deal's on. And maybe even out again. Insurance rate rollbacks, the Supreme Court takes up the issue, story at 11. If we had never met And the world got on without us Just as if we were never there at all We'd be searching yet For the next big thing that ever Anything but love will do Anything but hearts that beat like thunder Anything but love would be enough For anyone but you Maybe I gave too much. Maybe I expected too much. Maybe Dad should have read me the height report instead of Sleeping Beauty. There are no happily ever afters, no princes. Now, sir, just relax. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, the, the pilot has good vision, right? And a good marriage. I mean, his wife didn't leave him for some guy who's happy. He might want to dive into it or anything, huh? Just try to think good thoughts. Before you know it, we'll be in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, good thoughts, right. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to give the emergency landing procedure. Emergency? What? what? <laughs> Living with a writer made me realize I was a writer. Jack said I didn't have any talent. Jack's a pig. Home. Oh. 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 Excuse me. Excuse me. You're oming and I can't concentrate. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just trying to forget the fact that... Uh, Five million pounds of metal is slightly heavier than air. So it's okay. We'll be fine. I hear ticking. Hey, does that briefcase look a little big to you, or what? Why don't you just go back to your oming, and I'll just gonna go back to my writing. You're a writer? Yeah. Oh, and you keep a journal. That's great. You record your personal thoughts, right? Probe the questions of the universe. What is life? Does God exist? Why is this jerk pestering me? <laughs> no, 
I can read upside down. I, it's the only way I can learn Hebrew. <laughs> oh, don't look at me that way, really. I mean, I'm not, I didn't mean to hurt you like Jack did, you know? I can speed read, too. I, no, look, I think it's great. You know, you're moving back home, you're starting over, you're leaving a secure profession to become a writer. It's, uh, it takes a lot of guts. I thought you were a writer. Can I ask you a question? Uh, it's not too personal. Who are you? Marty Gold. Ah, okay. Well, look, Marty Gold, all I want right now is to be left alone. <sighs> gotcha. Marty Gold, the journalist? Huh, yeah, yeah. Chicago Monthly. Um, oh, oh, um, uh, is media running politics? I read that... Marty, excuse me, do you think I could switch seats with you? We're like old college buddies, you know? Thanks. Wow, wow. I'm really excited to meet you. You're a great writer. Well, you're, you're pretty good yourself. I, I've never known anyone to make a small Z correctly like that. I was the teacher. Hi, I'm Hannah Miller. Hi. Well, we're right next to the engines. I can't believe this. Where's the safety car? I can't. Bark bag, gifts. Oh, oh here it is. Death. Here it is. Uh, head between knees. <laughs> Why? Why? Marty, what's your favorite city? Come on. Huh? I, uh, well, I, I have two. Uh, Paris and, uh, Tiank, New Jersey. Good. Paris. We're not in an airplane. We're in Paris. Okay. Okay? Okay. We're strolling down the Champs-Élysées, and it's a beautiful spring day. And there's the Arc de Triomphe. Mm -hmm. There's the Place de la Concorde. There's McDonald's. Mm -hmm. And you see those two old guys sitting on the bench? They're playing chess and sipping wine. Aren't they sweet? Jacques and Pierre? Right. Yeah. And Jacques, he's wearing that old battered beret of his again. And that's the hottest ball spot. You know, you got pretty terrific descriptive powers. Need a job? Yeah. Would you do research? Anything. Well, they're uh, interviewing. Why don't you drop by the rack tomorrow? If there is a tomorrow. Marty, what Frank. are you talking about? No, I'm telling you, it's, it's scientific fact. This baby isn't airborne, and I'm like, in 20 seconds, we're both going to get that scoop on the shroud of turn. Believe me, I know it. <laughs> Marty. There's the Eiffel Tower. Oh, yeah, there it is. Eleven seconds. Dominique, Nique, Nique, son, allez, tout simplement. Routier, Pauvé, Chantant. Three, two, one. Here I come, and let's go. The managing editor will see you now. Ricky Brigham. Now, lose the gum, Ricky. Miss Miller? Hi, it's me, Deborah Kurtz. You are my eighth grade English teacher. <laughs> Debbie. Little Debbie? You got big. I'm applying for the neatest job as a researcher. What do you do here? I'm applying for the same neat job. Oh. Does that mean I'm moving up in the world or you're moving down? Why would you say that we're both trying to move up? <laughs> well, maybe we shouldn't be talking then. Oh, oh okay. Uh, Debbie, brilliant has two L's. <laughs> Did you get the job? God, I hope not. <laughs> Resumes. You heard the man. Sorry. We'll be in touch. Make a hole. Your protege can leave his resume, Mrs. Finch. Ah, Jules, ever the tin dictator. If only you were as light in attitude as you are in your loafers. For the hundredth time, Mrs. Finch, I am not gay. But looking at you does make me wonder why. <laughs> Norman, Norman, I want you to meet an excellent choice for the researcher position, Douglas Harrington, Jr. Two minutes. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> Hi, 
I'm... Qualified, conscientious, and a real people person. Look, I said leave your resume and go. How about you tell your boss that Hannah Miller is here and she'd like to buy him lunch? How about you go down to the restaurant on the corner and wait for him? How about I wait right here? Bless you. So, can you hear the ocean in there? Hey, I need that shot on chambers, Harry. Come on. <laughs> Millie, vitamin C. How many times? Vitamin C. Hiya. Hello. So, you got your interview with Norm? No. Actually, the uh, officious drone over there wouldn't give me a break. That drone happens to be my oldest friend. He saved my life when I was seven. Of course, you know, drone doesn't always have to be taken in that negative connotation. For instance, in the B family, well, he's a very no, popular guy. I asked guy. you nicely. Jules, make nice. This is my friend from the plane. <sighs> oh, really? Sorry to hear about Jack. <laughs> so, uh, can I take you into the black hole? You mean you're gonna take me in personally? Oh, come on, I owe you. I mean, you held my hand on the plane. You... In fact, you held my hand last night. Excuse me? In this dream. Wait a minute, you dreamt about me? I was Japanese. <laughs> my mother was Rodan. She had these huge orthopedic wings, and she had lipstick on her beak, and she's pecking away. It's like, you never call, you never write. <laughs> Then you take me to this cave we're having mimosas with Fred Flintstone and Alice was... No, 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 it's Fred and Wilma. No, no, Alice is my girlfriend. Although I find Wilma quite attractive, too. Uh, it's that bone in her hair, I think. Thank you for considering Douglas for the research position. Your daddy owes me, Dougie. My competition. Our turn, Pammy. Uh, Hannah Mello, this is Pamela Peyton Finch. She covers, what, trends, fashion, gossip, everything you want to know about... I don't know, nothing. <laughs> That must be why I've had the past two covers. <laughs> so, Martin is recommending you for the research position. You must have impressed him with your body of work. <laughs> Best of luck to you. Do I hate her? Oh, hate is such an ugly word. Despise. It's better. <laughs> what about him? Norman? You ever have a hangnail and you know if you pull it off it's gonna hurt, but you do it anyway? In a kind of a strange way, you kind of like it. Yeah. You're gonna like Norman. Can you say Grandpa? Gramp. <laughs> and good kisses. Bye bye. What? Norman, this is Hannah Miller. She's perfect for the research position. Two minutes. Piece of cake. Hi. Resume. You're a little old for this job, aren't you? I'm 29. You know, Grandma Moses was uh, 80 when she started painting. Great. Come and see me in 50 years. Uh, no. Actually, that would be 51. A teacher, huh? Yes. Noble profession. Why leave it? Uh, well, teaching had many rewards and... and, um... What are you smiling at? <laughs> I'm very happy to be here. I mean, I'm not. I mean, I'm, I'm just a little bit nervous. Just relax. Calm down. Let's start at it from the top, all right? You want to be a writer, yes. right? Why? Because you have a passion, a drive to say what you feel. Yes. A burning need to tell the world what's really churning inside your gut, huh? Yes. How do you know me? Because I've seen a thousand broads just like you. One week you want to be a writer, and the next week you want to open a cat boutique. Look. I don't need a ditz here. I need somebody who'll be a writer someday. So why don't you stick to teaching and have a nice day, sweetheart? Yeah. Okay? I can take being called a broad, but nobody calls me a ditz. You obviously just don't know who you're talking to. I am not some airhead dilettante from the north side. My father is a cop. I taught the inner cities three tours. Most people burn out after one. I worked all my life. I know life. I know people. I read this book. I loved it. I am the perfect person for this job, unless, of course, you would just rather have some snot-nosed brat that you can push around, in which case I should just go home. You've got a little bit of spittle just coming out of the corner of your mouth. Okay, let's see what you've got. Let's see if you can write, huh? 
No guarantees, no pay, just a shot. That's all I want. Got something here very interesting. Everything you need. Facts, figures, everything except the talent. I'll supply that. Two thousand words. Two thousand great words. On my desk, 9 a.m. in the morning. Uh, tomorrow morning. Vaya con Dios. <laughs> I'm such a ditz. Well, what happened? I just promised Mr. Keel a 2,000 word story by tomorrow. 2,000 words? Tomorrow? Look, it's okay. If you get the right story, it could write itself. The Tortilla Wars. <laughs> Does Chicago prefer corn oh, or flour? <laughs> Sorry, Hannah. It would have been nice. I mean, what am I supposed to say except corn or flour? You'll find something. Of course you will, dear. Even though the bullpen is littered with the bones of those who have tried. Well, I haven't tried yet. You're gonna be okay? Piece of cake. that last use the mascara professional models demanded covergirl professional mascara the curved brush colors defines every lash the professional formula lasts without smudging without giving up give me those eyes carol professional mascara there are a million reasons to drive a nissan Sentra, and everyone is different first time that i saw you I knew it was meant to be Every day together You keep pleasing me You got the way to move me yeah. You got the way The Nissan Sentra The inexpensive car people drive Because they want to Wednesday Go with me to the prom, Casey It's spring break in Vietnam Colleen out of gas. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> China Beach, Wednesday. Thursday. Have I really been gone eight years? The key to this mystery lies beyond the stars. Flight of the Navigator, Thursday. If you held a knife to my belly, I'd have to say corn. Does that help? Let me put it this way, Dad. Tell me again why you're doing this. Because I love it. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Stop it. You were a teacher. You had a profession. You had Blue Cross. Did I teach you a word a day so you could get coffee for people? Did that son in L.A. melt your brain? Do I need this? I'm trying to get the only job that means something to me. And does my dad offer me support, encouragement? No. All he says to me is, boy, oh boy, oh boy. If something is stupid, I should tell you it's stupid. What should I say? It's smart? Boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> Why don't you understand? I have wanted to be a writer ever since I was a kid. I mean, don't you remember? Every Halloween, I went as Lillian Hellman. I remember. That's all right when you're a kid, but you've got to grow up. You can't live a dream. Oh, really? Why not? You do. What are you talking about? This place. Daddy, all my life, all you ever talked about was moving to the country and painting, moving to the country and painting. Well, it took you 30 years, but you're doing it, and you love it. I just don't want to wait that long to do what I love. Nice clouds. They're sheep. <laughs> of course.
course they are. Dad, look, you had a wife and a family. You did great, but you didn't get to live your dream. I just want a chance to live mine, that's all. You're right. Hannah, your mother always told me, Leo, let them do what they want to. And she was right. So why the hell are you talking to me? You've got a story to write. No, Dad. I have a story I can't write. Oh, yes, you can. Because it's... Oh, Daddy, no. What's our credo? Dad. Say it or I'll drop you. It's Miller time. <laughs> Damn right. Now get to work. I'm gonna get some air. Hey, Dad. Mm. Thanks. Kind of late for a stroll. Uh, I, I, I'm looking for the Miller family, but uh, whatever you've done to them will be our little secret. <laughs> Marty Gold, Chicago Monthly Magazine. Remember my interview? How about a nice cup of coffee? Uh, no. No, no, thanks. I'm sure I'll be awake through the 90s now. I'm fine. Marty, what are you doing here? I, I just, you know, I, I just came by to... because I felt so terrible about the mess I got you into, that's all. Well, come on, you were a friend. Why should you feel guilty? Oh, come on. I, you know, I, I feel guilty about everything. I think I have an extra G chromosome. In fact. <laughs> but look, I know this thing means a lot to you, and I came out here to help. Well, what makes you think I need help? I mean, you're doing okay? You got something? Yeah. I got mm. uh, facts, I got figures, I got uh, nothing. <laughs> hey, you got me. That's wild boy. Oh, Marty, it's an owl. Marty, it's an owl. Hey. Hey, I like it here. Where are the dwarfs? <laughs> so what's the problem? I just have to care about what I'm writing. And I don't care whether it's flower, corn, flower, corn, flower, corn. I'm blocked. I'm totally blocked. What do you do when you're stuck? When I'm stuck? I don't know. I go over to my favorite chair, and I sit myself down, and I ask myself stupid questions. <laughs> like, uh, who is Prince Machabelli? You know? <laughs> I mean, is he royalty? Is he a wallet? Is he perfume? It, it works, trust me. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, here's one. If you can't spell a word, how are you supposed to look it up in the dictionary? Why do people look like they're dogs? <laughs> Who changes? And what about the Sunday papers on Saturday? I mean, how do they know? Uh, who writes their headlines for them? Yuri Geller, you know? <laughs> what about the guy who has like four strands of hair on his head and he like parts it over the right ear? <laughs> I mean, does he really think he's fooling anybody? And do we really want to know what's in head cheese? <laughs> and what's a mock turtle? I, I just don't know. I mean, do the real turtles ridicule them in public? <laughs> and do we really give a damn about tortillas? No. Exactly. Think about it. We're a man short tonight. Ever bowl some? Oh, uh... Oh, bowling? I don't know, bowling? Isn't that where you just throw rubber at wood and just get to wear other people's shoes? <laughs> Is she okay? Yes, yeah, she's fine. Let's go. You better bring your axe. You know, I think you have wild boar on your property. <laughs> Why is Mr. Keel taking so long to read my work? Because he adores it and is savoring every word, or he detests it and is making copies to show his friends at parties. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry God. you hurt yourself bowling, Marty. Oh, oh, this is funny? You think my pain is funny? <laughs> no, it's just the idea of you throwing a ball across four names. <laughs> my only strike? <laughs> Hannah, it was unbelievable. It's like a different world. 
the, the spitting, scratching. I counted eight guys named Gus. I had to wear women's shoes. Gus number six, he missed his spare and he mooned the pins. You feel better? Yeah, thank you. Gather round, people. I want you to hear this. What's your favorite city? Rome. I've never been to Rome. Look, we're in Las Vegas. There's Siegfried. There's Roy. There's Elvis. He's alive. And Finn. You finished, Gold? I asked Miller here to give me 2,000 words on the Tortilla Wars. Did I get a comprehensive, fact-filled piece? No. What I got instead was a tirade on superficiality in our culture. And I quote, Every day the less fortunate in Chicago face hunger, disease, and homelessness. But we ignore them. We're too busy saying, pass the salsa. I have goosebumps the size of grapefruits. <laughs> Look, Mr. Keel, you and I both know that this tortilla story is stupid. But what's not stupid is the fact that there are a lot of people who don't have a choice between flour or corn or anything else. And if you can't see that what I've written matters, then this isn't the place I want to be, and you're certainly not the man that I thought you were. Look, this is what I want to write about, and if I can't do it here, I'll do it somewhere else eventually. I just need as good of a teacher as I was. So, anyway, thanks very much for the experience, and bye con Dios. No, buenos dias. <laughs> this is your W-4 form, and this is your company ID, and this is your desk. I got the job. Welcome aboard. Oh, I guess I was, um, humiliatingly inappropriate. <laughs> you found an angle on this piece, Miller, that my other so-called seasoned writers couldn't. All right, Gold, I want to first draft in the Chambers piece on my desk tomorrow morning. You, that uh, article on lingerie, it's flat. I want background. Jules, I got 15 minutes to board meeting. I want my notes. Let's go, everybody. We got a magazine to put out here. Let's look alive. Oh, yeah. 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 Research, Miller. Uh-huh. The mating habits of the yak. Sure, I'll get right on it. Okay. People all over America are losing weight with the Slim Fast liquid diet. In one week, I lost seven pounds. Seven pounds. Slim Fast is making a pledge. Give us a week, we'll take off the weight. One week and the weight was gone. Each Slim Fast shake is a delicious, nutritious, low-calorie meal. Have one shake for breakfast, one shake for lunch, then eat a sensible dinner. Not only did I lose four pounds in a week, I lost five. The Slim Fast pledge. Give us a week, we'll take off the weight. subpoena in your pocket, or are you just glad to see me? Did you work late tonight? Do you think an affair counts as an affair if you're not married? 30-something. Watch the Emmy-winning 30-something next. This is Charles Gibson. And Joan Lund. Tomorrow on Good Morning America, Sybil Shepard on her latest big screen role in Chances Are. Also Cincinnati Bengal turned soap star Boomer Esiason on Good Morning America. Tomorrow. When it comes to my relationships with women, I guess I know my way around. Lock the door. I gotta tell you, Christine, I am starting to lose the mood here. Coach, tomorrow after head of the class.